Have you ever imagined how you will feel and how you will cope if from one day to another you woke up missing a part of you that you not only cherish but that is integral to your life? How might a runner deal with losing control of her legs? A chef who loses his sense of taste? A singer who loses her voice? Well, I couldn't have imagined it myself, but it has happened to me. Out of the blue, I woke up one morning to the realization that my eyes, the most important and appreciated part of my body, were no longer working in harmony. In fact, they were fighting against each other. I was suddenly seeing everything double, and my sense of depth perception and ability to touch things accurately was out of the window. As a visual artist, my eyes and my hands are everything to me. So here's my question again. How do you handle losing what you cherish the most overnight? I hesitated for a while before making this film for many reasons. But I've realized that the health issues are unfortunately something that all of us will face sooner or later in one way or another. We will all have to adapt to the new reality of living with a body that may not work as we need it to. Another universal experience that I hope to address here is the loneliness that can beset us when we experience health issues. We may think that this is only happening to us, that we are alone in this new nightmare and it's so easy when you're at your weakest physically that your mental health suffers as you struggle to make sense of what is happening to you. But you're not alone. Facing an illness that is so debilitating is a really tough lesson in the priorities, expectations, ambitions, sense of worth, and even your legacy that firmly seems to define your life. To give you an idea, I went from being a completely functional adult, creating intricate miniature sets, props and puppets by hand and bringing them to life through stop motion animation, to one morning waking up to this. It didn't matter how much I tried to focus, everything in front of me was in this senseless double vision scene that was frankly the most overwhelming experience I had ever encountered. This was a living nightmare and I just couldn't wake up from it. And the nightmare continued. I visit many hospitals and trying to fill up necessary form when you're seeing everything double is not an easy task, I can tell you. And then they will all the test, scan, first brain MRI. I remember having a massive headache before this whole thing started, but other than that, I had no clue what was happening to me. So I went for more checks, a lump puncture, a second brain MRI, and more blood tests. It seemed endless. But during all this discomfort, I was reminded of the beauty of humanity's soul. I was really touched by the medical staff who work such long hours and in such difficult situations. They see people at their most vulnerable when they are upset, unwell, sometimes angry or even aggressive. I was really impressed by their kindness, patience, compassion and thoughtfulness, especially when I was so weak that I struggled to even walk straight. I spent the next few weeks flipping between one hospital visit and another, my bed and my couch. I was unable to do anything else. Having lost my sense of balance and with it my vitality, it seems like I woke up daily in the body of an 80 year old lady, even though I'm just 42 years old. There were also days when I felt the warm balm of optimism, those days when my balance was a little bit better and I could manage a long walk. And so it went, a good day, then back to my bed or my sofa the next day with my eyes closed and feeling exhausted beyond belief. My life started to become simpler and slower in pace. It was impossible to multitask anymore and I couldn't rush anything even if I wanted to. My energy tank was so low that every day I had to be humble about what my body will allow me to do. 
a stark contrast to the usual control of deciding what I wanted to do or what needed to be done. No, I no longer had control over my life. Instead, my body had control over me. Health issues don't often come with a manual. There is no clear time frame, detailed steps or explanation for how things will be or how you will feel. I didn't get any pointers on how to handle the exhausting frustration that would debilitate me every day because I wasn't able to do the most basic thing like driving for example. I've been very lucky to have some precious friends and family members who regularly check up on me, send me lovely messages and leave a gift to remind me that they were thinking of me. It made such a difference to me on the darkest day. But it wasn't just friends and family. I've, I also received some adorable messages from people who follow my YouTube channel as well as my neighbours who were kind and supportive too. I was touched and uplifted by the thoughtfulness of people and it truly made me feel better. And I must forget my lovely purring companion, who gave me lots of cuddles, a wonderful therapy in itself. I stayed out of my workshop for a while, as every hand gesture was a painful reminder of what I had lost. The most basic thing that I could do so precisely without effort was now a complicated maneuver of painful frustration. How could I end up finding it tricky just to remove some screws? I've started what I call puzzle therapy. I've always enjoyed jigsaw as they are so relaxing, going back to this lovely pleasure of holding those little pieces in my hand and rearranging them in the right order with such a sense of satisfaction when they fitted perfectly together was a delight. I couldn't ignore the parallel with how I was trying to put the pieces of my life back together. And as time released its pressure and made way for space, I began to see the improvement that I call my little victories. The first one was when I was able to do yoga again after five weeks of not being able to. Then I noticed that the heavy headaches were receding a little and I had better balance. This was huge, and I realized that it was having an impact on the way I expressed myself too. Instead of saying that I should do exercise, the language subtly shifted to I am able to do some exercise. That has been a real milestone and change in mindset for me. And slowly but surely, I've made my way back to my workshop to attend little craft projects. I've needed to do things differently than I did before. For example, knowing that my sight is not reliable means that I have to go more slowly and be okay about not getting things right. I can literally pour some liquid right next to the container and yet it's not in the place I think it's in. Yes, I make a mess, but it doesn't matter. I know the bigger picture is crucial to embrace. I realized some time ago that I not only had to heal my sight, but I had to heal my relationship with my own hands. I kept focusing on my little victories and consider it a good day if I was able to do a task better than the day before, grab something the first time around, go for a longer walk than usual, or simply feel the joy of using my hand instead of being frustrated by their limitations. Appreciation has been another important tool to maintain a healthy mind, realizing that my situation could have been so much worse and that I've been very lucky indeed to be able to carry on enjoying the many little pleasures during the day. This is precious and I'm deeply grateful. I've always thought that when we end up in a situation that we cannot control, the most important thing is our mindset, how we approach the situation and our perception of the event. This is perhaps the only thing that we really have any control over. So going back to my initial question at the beginning of this film, how do you cope? 
Well, you just do. What is the alternative? Going around in circles, contemplating your own misery? Giving up? Hell no. You just take it step by step and day by day. There will be tough days and there will be good days. And they are all part of the healing process. If today is a difficult ride, tomorrow might not be. And there will always be better days to come. Health issues are an eye-opener to what we are prioritizing and emphasizing. But more importantly, I think this situation has helped me to develop a deeper sense of empathy for anyone who has had to face any form of disability. For example, overnight I found myself in a situation where every waking hour I had to wear a big eye patch, which would be the first thing people saw upon meeting me. I could feel that it changed the way they looked at me and the reaction caused by their first impression. I constantly had people ask me what happened. I realized I was fortunate not to have been a victim of an accident or a violent attack, for example. That would have made everything to explain the situation repeatedly extremely painful and traumatic. In my case, it was a simple story that I woke up like this one day and now I must learn to live and readapt my whole life around this new reality. I could see the empathy coming through the eyes of the person facing me, the sadness, and sometimes pity. But I was still the same person, even though what people were seeing was different. The strange thing about my eye situation is that I can still use each eye separately, just not together anymore. My left eye is the one that has nerve damage, so it's unstable and makes me feel like I'm on a boat whenever I move. However, if I want to read something up close, this eye is the sharpest one. The right eye isn't as precise, but it's stable, so if I want to go for a walk, this is the one I use. So I've learned what I can do with each eye independently, but I just can't use them both at the same time anymore. Two months have passed now since my brain's connection with my left eye became damaged. I'm still seeing everything double when both of my eyes are open, but I've learned to function with one eye at a time. My sense of balance and energy level are much better. And also I may not be as quick and as precise with my hands anymore, I can see clear improvements. So far, despite tons of tests and many visits to various neurologists, doctors and ophthalmologists, no cause has been discovered for has been diagnosed as six nerve palsy. Without finding the cause, there is no way to predict how it will evolve. Whether my eyes will recover or not is something I would love to know, but it's impossible to tell. My life has been turned upside down and inside out, and there is no clear way of knowing how all this will unfold. And is that not knowing that is difficult to come to terms with. However, I prefer not to give too much energy to that and instead focus on other things. I'm still unable to do detailed 3D works, but I can think, imagine, write, film and edit videos. Luckily for me, my brain works like a 3D software, so even with my eyes closed, I'm able to imagine so many detailed shapes, colors, and movement in my internal space. If you're seeing this film and you're losing sight or starting to see double, I'm not going to show go the situation, it's going to be a rough crossing. But little by little, it will get better. Patience is so important while you are learning to adapt to a new situation, so don't lose hope or stop trying when things don't work as quickly as you expected. Take a break, have a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit or two, four or five in my case, and then later on, or the next day, go again. As long as you don't give up and you are consistent, you will see improvement probably won't get fixed overnight, but it will get easier with time. Just don't lose hope. <laughs>